All right. So you've seen the Esther Pasaris there. That was in the campaigns uh, today here in Nairobi, and she now joins me in studio. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. Thank you. It must have been a busy day, obviously. Like it was hectic. Earlier. It was hectic. Mm -hmm. It was hectic, but brilliant, mm -hmm. and also saddening. I mean, I, the more. I go right deep into the areas that I haven't been for a long time. I mean, Embakasi, we went through, we covered quite a bit of it. Mm -hmm. To watch that nothing's really changed, mm -hmm. you know. I mean, we talk about infrastructure. We, we've ignored the inner streets, the inner infrastructure. You look at, I mean, you, you, a lot of things are bad. You've got the roads are horrible, horrible, horrible. Mm -hmm. And the city is actually developing in a manner that really needs a good government that works with the county government. All right. We'll get into that shortly, uh, Esther, but there's something also very important, another conversation about the chaos, um, you know, that was experienced uh, yesterday and even the day before in Kabarnet, Kisumu and uh, Thika. And, uh, you know, very many uh, Kenyans, even on my Twitter handle, are saying, but the politicians themselves are at the center of this incitement. Okay, let me tell you what, mm. I, I think... As politicians, I've seen it. I mean, sometimes you get a group of people that just feel that they have to cheer you on, cheer mm -hmm. you on, and then you, you give them something little later on, and they feel like this is what you, how you want us to behave. Mm -hmm. We need to actually send out a message that this is not the way to behave. And I love that Musali Mudavadi did that when we went on a rally. Mm -hmm. He actually said, no, we do not want you to behave in this manner because now there's going to be retaliation. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think what happened in Kisumu was wrong, but it was just heckling. All right, which you expect in a, in a rally. All right, and I think also um, it was after one of the speakers actually demeaned Raila in his own tough. Mm -hmm. All right, I think we have to be careful. You know, calling, calling him Mtuatandawili, you know, this Kimundu, you know, those kind of things are not going to go well. You don't do that in Kisumu. So they did that, they got heckled. Now we go to uh, thicker. thicker. And then you have a situation where because we did that, they are now going to revenge. But they revenge in a very bad way. So what then is the message that politicians should be sending out? I, no, I think what we have to do is actually talk to our youth. If we can tell the youth that at the end of the day, we are all Kenyans and we have to live together. And for me, one wrong doesn't make another uh, two wrongs don't make a right. Mm -hmm. So here you have a situation where something goes wrong in one area. Mm -hmm. Do not take revenge on the other. In fact, I have a feeling and I pray that if the the Jubilee principles go into any area that is NASA. Treat them with utmost respect. You know, if they say something that you don't like, for, by all means, heckle, boo, whatever. You know, but do not resort to throwing stones. All right. You, no. That, I mean, the violence of stones, mm. I mean, for me, that was wrong. All right. We saw Raila being, you know, all over his head, all over my car got stoned as well. No, because you're going to injure somebody, and that could throw the country into chaos. All right. Yeah. Let's talk about uh, that poll that was released uh, uh, about two weeks ago that put you uh, at the top of the uh, Nairobi women representative race, and you had about 55%, and Rachel Shebesh had 26%. Uh, so... First of all, how are you uh, conducting your campaigns? Apart from you know, being with Raila Odinga and the whole NASA team, are you having door-to-door -door campaigns? And what do you think actually is the reason why you, you have an edge over her right now, according to the polls? Well, I think, um, first, I, I've worked with the public, uh, with the Nairobians before, mm -hmm. Mama Ta, so, and I'm having a good social media presence. But ODM has got amazing structures. We've got chairmen, we've got youth leaders, and we've got women. So when I started my campaign in the nominations, I involved the entire structure. Mm -hmm. now, now today I've incorporated WIPER. I've actually sat down with all the WIPER chair ladies. Uh, Kidero runs a very, very effective campaign as well. I mean, and he's embraced all of us in his campaigns. We go into his program as well because Nairobi is big. Mm -hmm. For me as the county woman representative, I find it so difficult um, resource-wise to go around the entire county. I mean, the budget for county woman rep is about 400 million. I don't have that kind of money, mm -hmm. and even if I did, I wouldn't spend it campaigning, you know, so I'd ride on the backs, and of course, when Baba comes to the county, it makes everything so much more easier. Mm, it's easier to even campaign. Yeah. And talking about uh, money, uh, you, uh, your social media right now on Twitter, you went out and, you know, you're asking people to actually sort of like fundraise, and, you know, it, it got a bit of a backlash. Everybody's asking why, and even though... Uh, articles, uh, unfortunately writing that, you know, Esther Pasais has even gone broke. So what is the thinking behind uh, you know, raising money for campaigns? And the other thing to look at it is, if Esther Pasais is, you know, trying to raise this money for the campaigns, what about the young people who are trying to come up? 
Okay, I'll tell you one thing. Mm -hmm. um, I was raising that money. It wasn't just for me. Okay. It was for me and all the women MCA aspirants within NASA. It's so sad that majority of them do not have the resources to come out. Mm -hmm. And this is what I want to tell Kenyans. At the end of the day, if you, if you actually make the leader spend all his resources on his own, you've got to embrace your leader. You know, like right now, we've got a Dr. Pauling station. The whole idea of a Dr. Pauling station is we need a billion shillings on election day. Mm -hmm. Everybody's expecting Ryla to have the billion shillings to do this? No. You want Ryla to be your president? Embrace the, embrace the campaigns. Mm -hmm. Barack Obama did it in America, raising money to be able to become the leader. Mm -hmm. I feel, I mean, if when they say I'm broke, I mean, Uhuru is probably one of the richest men in the world, if not Kenya. You know, he's amongst the top rich men in the world. Uh, so at the end of the day, he's fundraising because elections are very expensive. Mm -hmm. And I feel when, the, when you love your leader, and you want your leader in, don't let money by people who've actually had an advantage make her or him mm -hmm. not get an opportunity. So when I realized that so many people uh, require t-shirts, umbrellas, um, campaign materials, okay, then you've got people who are sick, you've got funerals, you've got disasters. I can't cope with it. Mm -hmm. I don't even have the time to go out and call my friends and say, help me out. Mm -hmm. So what I did is I thought, let me come up with a way, if we can get support for the 100 shillings, we give out something as a result. You know, we give somebody a gift, a token. And Kenyans love to bet. We know that. Mm -hmm. So I just thought, okay, let's give out a gift. Yeah. Bicycles, because I, I realize people trek and walk a long distance. I want Kenyans to cycle a lot more. A healthy nation. Cycling is fantastic. One border border, you know. Um, and I just thought, you know, it's a good way to raise money. Mm -hmm. And if it's successful, I also will help, which I've been doing, the other candidates. Some of them don't have banners. They're not, they're not visible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. What is the message that you're sending in your campaigns? Uh, what is it that you're selling to, to Nairobi <coughs> that you will do differently? What is it that Rachel Shebesh did, didn't do that you want to do? Okay. I mean, when I started off, I wanted to be the governor. Mm -hmm. And the reason I wanted to be the governor is because that's where the resources are. That's where you can actually make a big impact. Unfortunately, the Jubilee government doesn't embrace devolution, so they starved Kidero of a lot of funding, 71 billion. He could have done so much more if he had that money. So for me right now, I'm looking at the problems. Legislation, the development fund that Raila promises the women, uh, the woman fund, the youth fund, I'll work with all that, the laws, the budgetary. But I'm a businesswoman and I'm a social entrepreneur. I want to put people together. I mean, one of the first projects that I want to do is cleaning up Nairobi. I want the youth to be involved together, collectively. You know, make a big collective charmer. You have the small, small charmers of a million here, 100,000 here, 200,000. I want a charmer of a thousand shillings contribution a month, one million youth, one million women separated because we have different things to tackle. Mm -hmm. And then we start doing, and I want to take the contracts for garbage collection. We collect the garbage, we recycle it into something that is useful, and at the same time, clean up our estates. Give the Juakali the dustbins to make. Give the Juakali mechanics the, the servicing of the trucks. I want every, once we have a billion shillings, in every ward, I want two garbage collection trucks. By the youth, cleaning up the estates. There's so many projects that we can do. Water. Mm -hmm. Every time I go into the slums and I see all this water that's being wasted, the rainwater, etc. How can we channel it into a treatment plant so that we can recycle it back into the estates? All right. There's so many needs. Housing. I think everybody in Nairobi deserves to have a low-cost house. Mm -hmm. A house that you rent and pay, rent purchase schemes. So as Kenyans, while we know that the Jubilee government has really put this country into a huge debt, how can we come together? There's so many Kenyans in the diaspora. If they know that there's somebody who will actually do the job transparently, not just going there to enrich themselves, how much money is enough? Sometimes when I think about the kind of money people are holding in their banks, I feel, come on, you cannot sell your products to a poor nation. Mm -hmm. Let's empower the people, and then you also have a, a higher purchasing power. So I want to use my business sense to solve the problems and to empower everybody. So we basically are going to maximize right. benefit, minimize profit. All right, Esther, we'll continue the conversation in a few minutes, but for now.